Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel, but today I'm yanking something from George Bruno. Couple, two weeks ago, George and I had a pretty awesome conversation and I wanted to share it with you. Now I understand that he has a bigger audience, but maybe, maybe you didn't see it. Maybe you didn't see it. Maybe you don't know George. I think you should meet him. He's a fine man, stoic, strong, wise, and fair. I don't know what kind of person you like to listen to, but that's my kind of jam. The other thing that's pretty darn cool is he, along with many others, will be speaking at the Men's 21 convention. You guys, I'm, ex <laughs> I'm excited about this. So um, I, I'm going. I'm so excited that I'm going because I want to hear... Um, I want to hear them speak, make women great again. I'm also interested in that. Uh, and I have links below. So if you, if you want to go and watch these guys with me, that'd be super duper. Okay. Without further ado. Well, hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm always honored when everybody joins in a conversation. You have a lot of choices, but you chose to be here today. So thank you very much. The special guest today is Jennifer Molesky who I discovered when she commented on a few things on my channel, which prompted me to go and look at her channel. And I thought that I found a gem. Oh. And she has some quotes that I'm really enjoying. And you did a video called The Role of Women. Yeah. That, fascinating. That was, yeah, it was fascinating. Was it fascinating because no one else says that? Yes. Probably, yeah. Yes, yeah. How did you come up with the concept of the role of women? Um, whenever I talk about relationships, so I also did a video called, um, what is it? Oh, find a man that makes you feel fat and ugly. Uh, I recently did a video, treat your man like he's going to cheat. And then the, this blank, the war out of men. Whenever I look at my, I, whenever I look at my husband, I feel these very warm feelings for him and they often inspire me to write about it and think about it. And then I tell anyone who will listen about it. So that's, that, that's where I get those. And, and they're, and they're kind of misleading the, the titles, at least for the fat and ugly. Like, I don't genuinely mean that, but kind of, I do. And then yeah. treat your man like he's going to cheat is, is basically so you can have revenge if he ever does, because no one will ever treat him as good as you did. You know, like always just be the bar, be yeah. the mold of an awesome, awesome partner. And then you will attract an awesome partner and off you go. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. You said, all right, so the last two minutes of you talking, I'm laughing on the inside. And one of the things that <laughs> makes you special is that you were saying funny things, but you, like, your face was not like a comedian face. You were, like, dead serious. And that's a gift. That is a talent because you have, like, this dry thing going on. I mean, the titles of those videos are hilarious. <laughs> They're fun, right? They really are. All right. You are the bar. Explain that. Well, I want women to be the bar. Um, I, I said before to, uh, I said before that it seems like everyone wants to be different, but everyone appears to be the same. So I was thinking about that with, with French manicures. Like pe people want to go out and get their nails done to look like everyone else's. So is that the bar? Like everyone else, sheep, boring? Okay, so there's that. And if you're going to be like everyone else, I look at all the role models of women and they're all, do you remember? Of course you do. This, pss, that like hand in the face. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Me. Yes. And that's what women, so women started doing that because it was part of the culture, which was so rude. It was just a rude thing. It was like, I can't, I don't have the time nor probably the brain power to articulate my point. So I'm just going to do this because I'm just too good for you. So this culture is teaching women different versions of that and i it doesn't work it doesn't i don't think it makes women happy it certainly doesn't make the men around them happy it's just bad advice i guess bad guidance so when i say be the bar i'm saying don't get the french manicure don't do this find a way to honestly articulate your first of all know yourself and articulate yourself and represent yourself to the best of your ability and then and then if, if someone else picks up on that, then you have two of you and then you can start to uh, uh, change a generation or a culture. But until then, I want women to be the bar, which is be better, be the best. 
Wow. Give, our, give, give women a good reputation, if you will. I like that. Give women a good reputation. Wow. And it starts with your reputation. Because I'm all about individual individuality. Like we can all blame blacks or whites or fat or skinny or men or women or Christians or Islam. This is so easy. It's like low hanging fruit. Yeah. It's boring and it doesn't, it doesn't reap a lot of thought or benefit. So I like to go to the individual. I get some slack, flack, flack. I get flack from some people for not going out and doing more to change like the structure of society, such as laws. But I'm not, I don't, I know I lean right a little bit, but I'm more of a non-statist. So I believe in, in you know, voluntary communications and interactions. So therefore I always go back to the individual. If I can change an individual to be a better person, whatever that looks like to them. Categories, you hate categories. Like I, like in this country right now, everyone falls into one of two categories, you're Republican or Democrat. And I get that and I, I despise anything that puts people in little pockets. You know, I wouldn't mind it so much if the pockets were more specific. Yeah. You know, like I, I look at I look at this word that's thrown out often, which is racist or sexist or whatever word. I, I don't mind labels or words, but there has to be a precise meaning. And it seems like with our IQ dropping or something that people don't know how to how to come to terms with any definition. So everything is just bleh. it doesn't mean anything anymore to be labeled as anything because words are less important or, or something to that effect. Yeah. I have said it because right now everybody's a racist. Uh -huh. and if everybody's a racist, then no one's a racist. Yeah. Then we're all, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So what good is that? Okay. So everyone has to change. Okay. Change to what? Change together. Okay. If everyone is this, this, then we all have to change to be this. It's all the same. We're all, we're all the same. Yeah. I used to say uh, when I was going to the Jersey Shore on a regular basis, there was what I call like these skateboard boys. And it's boys that would wear all black and dye their hair black and have like that emo kind of like uh -huh. with the bangs going like right in front of their eyes. Okay? <laughs> Some of them would paint their nails black. Oh. Mm -hmm. And and they were like all like 13, 14, 15. They all had skateboards. They all had like a like a fed up with life uh -huh. on their face. Of this? And I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And they did it to be different. Uh -huh. And then I'd see like a, like 20 of them all together, black hair in front of their face, dressed in black, some of them just all emoed out. And I'm thinking, boy, he's really being different like the other 19. And then all yeah. of a sudden, what was, you know, like the one emo kid in high school. Okay, he was cool. Uh -huh. And then it became like a thing. Yeah. And then it wasn't cool anymore. Of, yeah, I guess maybe people people see if something works for someone else, then it might work for them. Yeah. And then in their in their peer group, they're all in black and they all have black nails and they're all pouty together. Uh, so they birds of a feather flock together. But then they go out into the world and they're this individual in black with black nails, man. And they're different in that group. And don't look at me, even though I'm I'm flashing. Look yeah. at me. But yeah, in their in their little peer group, they're the same. But yeah, they, people do what works, even if it's negative. I think that's why, yeah, I think that's why we're in the state of the world right now. You scream really loud and you're a total asshole, you'll probably get attention. Exactly. Normal doesn't get attention anymore, does it? I, I, I don't know, I've been thinking about this lately. I've been thinking about attention and what does get attention. And I feel like most people want it. They want to be noticed by their loved ones or their neighbor or someone. Right. And with with the state of the world with women, it seems like if you are normal and I'll, I'll, I'll qualify that normal, a little bit dress a little bit more. Don't notice me. Act a little bit more. Don't notice me are a little bit more kind to people that will get you more noticed. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen that picture of all the people in the crowd hailing Hitler? And then there's this one guy that's like yeah it's it's like a sea it's a sea of people and there's this one guy and the and, caption is be that guy yeah, yeah. and he's kind of normal thinking he's probably thought it through pretty logically but he gets attention maybe not in that in in that moment because there's just a sea of insanity but i do think that logic and kindness and manners and and civility and being normal can get you the right attention from the right people maybe
So that's my thinking on that lately. Did you ever see the movie 1984? N no, but I read the book. That's the, yeah. the farm animals, right? No, that well, actually, oh. that's Animal Farm. 1984 is the dystopia where pleasure is forbidden and Big Brother is watching you. And they and they do kind of like this salute thing, this crossed hands thing in front of themselves. Is that where they have the hate? The, like, minute of hate? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. And it seems like there's a lot of that happening today where you have to jump on. There's pressure to jump on these weird movements. You know, and people who are vulnerable, I guess, well, I guess people who have studied cults before, everyone knows that cults recruit people that are hurt, are lost, that are needy, and they become very faithful members. And I'm looking at what's going on in the world today. Let's just, let's talk intergender dynamics for a second. When I see men that are recently divorced or recently broken up, they, they join, uh, they become like red pilled uh -huh. and women are the cause of everything in their life. And I just yeah. interviewed a guy that said, stop blaming women, man, blame yourself. Uh, why blame not? Yourself. Yeah. You are responsible for your own life. You did not get blindsided like you want the world to think mm -hmm. happened to you. You somehow contributed to the demise of your marriage. Man up, step up to the plate and take responsibility. Nobody, or I should say rarely, is anyone 100% blindsided. Yeah, yes. Put, put, I like to stack as much possible responsibility on myself for the things that happen in my life. Even if it's 1%. So, I mean, I think that's so rare. Uh, I'm sorry. The reason I'm saying that is, like, I'm thinking of, like, the most horrific things that can happen. Like, somebody knocks on your door and shoots you in the face. Okay, are you responsible for, you know, but that's just so out of the norm. Most right. of life, sorry, most of life is, you you really have far more control than you'd like to believe. And when you realize that, then you have power. And then if anything bad happens, then you have to take responsibility. Oh, shit. Well, oh, that's not as fun. Yeah. It's not as easy. It's all habitual. I mean, if you get in the habit of blaming others, then that's, you hardly know any better. That's your pattern, that you wake up and you blame the mailman and the stupid trash guy didn't do this right, and your dog's dumb, and boss is an asshole, and, and then you go to bed, just like totally disempowered, and then that, that loops into, that's your life. Then you're on your deathbed, then you die. Good job. Good job. Could have went a different way. Yeah. I say that a lot. I, I do a what? lot. I I usually clap when I when I mention scenarios like that. I go, "Good job, good job." Oh. That's kind of like something that I do often with people. Uh -huh. yeah, all right, you you blamed everything mm -hmm. on your ex-wife. You did nothing wrong, and now you have a hundred guys around you saying, "Yeah, women suck." Good uh -huh. job. I recently did a video, um, a satire video on Tommy Laren because she went off the hook and was just pissed off. And I, I thought about it, I, I poked fun at it because it's ridiculous to be so emotional, but I see people of both genders doing that. It's like, it's like she, that was her version of red pill rage. It didn't, yeah. life isn't going how she thought it was supposed to or how it was going to. Sorry for the noise. Here, I'm gonna shut the window. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so she was just raging. And um, I guess it needs to happen sometimes. But the problem is she's going to get a bunch of women behind her like, yeah, men do suck. We're so awesome. And then this is going to keep everyone ooh, static and not moving in any way to change anything for their life. Yeah. I mean, everyone's going to have a fan. I mean, like a, you know, a fan. Yeah. So, I mean, cho echo choose your chamber. What's it's that? An echo it's an echo chamber. Yeah. And sometimes you need that. I mean, sometimes you need that for... Hmm. Like, let's say a woman is a, is a huge feminist, right? Super huge feminist. And then she watches one of our videos, yours or mine, and it kind of interests her. She hates it. She hates the message, but she comes back. At some point, if she's going to change her thinking, she's not going to know. She has no imagination or vernacular to fill in the gaps of what we're talking about. So she's going to have to kind of echo chamber for a little bit to get a sense of what we're talking about. And then she can go out into the world and articulate it herself. What it's like the trivium. What is it? Uh, grammar, logic, and then rhetoric. 
first you have to know the words that, that people are using and then you have to have it logically make sense and then you can go and speak on it. How the hell did I get there? I can't remember, but I feel like it's, it was the right avenue. Does that make sense? Am I speaking yeah. sense? No, I mean, that's, that's early grammar education where they would say, okay, this is the word, this is the definition. Here's a picture of it. Now use it in a sentence. Yeah. Yeah, that's the trivium. That's the, the oldest way of, of learning. So, I th yeah, that's what I was, you said about, um, you didn't say circle jerk, but something like that. People need that for a little bit. People need that for a little bit in order to understand an opposing idea or to yeah. support their new idea. So I, I don't, I don't totally discourage that but it's like once you have the gist of it once you understand okay all women suck go out into the world and see if there's other see if you were wrong in any way all men yeah. suck go and see if there's other other avenues that you could mm, consider echo chamber and circle jerk really are <laughs> the same thing <laughs> i know <laughs> I, I do like that phrase though uh the role of women when i watched that video mm. And he talked about men going off to war. Mm. Talk about that scenario. Well, I think when when a man is allowed to exhibit his masculinity, his testosterone is higher. And so so he goes out into the world and he has to vibrate, maybe not has to, but tends to vibrate a little bit differently than when he comes home and he deals with the children or the neighbor. and. He could probably do that himself, but I feel like it's easier when the when the woman's role is is actuated. I don't know if that's a word that she will bring him down to a normal like. Okay, you don't have to murder everyone. You don't have to kill everyone. You are here. You're safe. I'm here for you. I'm gonna rub your back. Switch gears. Yeah, and and that's kind of how I see the role of women. Now, when everyone when when men's masculinity when men's testosterone is down and women's testosterone is up everyone's kind of operating the same so what's the role of women i don't know anymore what's the role of men i don't know anymore but when we when we actually have high amount of estrogen over here and high amount of testosterone over there then a woman can actually be of importance to that type of man or personality man that's it we used i remember the phrase uh, how years ago I, I don't hear many people saying it anymore how a woman can calm the savage beast. Uh -huh. you, know, you don't hear people talking about that anymore. Well, because women are the savage beast. Because they were taught oh, that we're supposed to wow. we're supposed to compete. No, I mean we're supposed to compete. So women yes. are like, oh. oh boy, did you nail it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, most people can be strong and powerful and alpha if they, in moments. But it seems to me that women are taught to be that all the time. And what's the use of men? And then they complain that they can't find a man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So a guy, it's funny. You're a guy. You, you, seem, you seem masculine. Do you want to know why I think that? Why? Because I don't, I don't ever hear you whine. I, f you, your tone is consistent with your mind, it seems, and your mind is constrained, it seems to me, of your own volition. You know what I mean? Like, you're not letting it go out. You are controlling it, and then the words you say are controlled as well. You don't seem to let things bother you, and I think that that's, let it, being emotional is a little bit more female. You don't do that, and you're, and you're fair-minded. You know, I don't hear you blame. I hear you go internal and try to coach other people to do so. Now, that's only how I see it. But you are of that breed. Your commenters, I'm, I'm one of them, but your male commenters seem also like that. Stoic, taking in information, being calm about it. You know, I don't, I don't see a lot of rants or, or name-calling in your comment section. Congratulations. That's very important. What you know, like a lot of content providers just want butts and seats. You know, like that's a restaurant term. Like we just want people to eat at our restaurants. No, yeah. I mean it depends on what kind of restaurant. But if you're you have a niche and you 
have a type of person that you want to have as your comrade. You're doing a good job at that, I would say. I always liken it, sorry, one more. I always liken it to the Wizard of Oz and the bad witch has all those imps and they go yeah. flying for her and do their bidding. They're just kind of icky things. I, I, they, they seem like bad teammates. They'll do what you want, but they're weak and they're, and they're icky. But you, ha you are commanding more of an army of, of strong, muscular, I mean that uh, as, as an avatar of the yeah. mind type of an army. So kudos to you. How long have you had how long have you had your channel? Four and a half years. Okay. Was it was it was there ever a point where you found some people who were kind of blamers and you had to um Oh yeah. 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 I uh I started out as a men's grooming channel and of course and then it and really it, it literally I just all I did was like hair and beards. Like okay. this is how to trim a beard, how to shape a mustache, how you should I'm mean, literally that's yeah it's that was meant and then I started making comments about, well, if you trim your beard this way, it will appear more masculine. Okay. And if you do this, uh, it feminizes your look. So I started kind of getting into the philosophy of male and female. And then I started getting female followers ah. who said, I watch your stuff and then play it for my boyfriend or my husband or whatever, or me and my husband now watch your videos together. And then I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And it just kind of, snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. I like how when you said the word alpha, your voice changed, your face changed, and you did this quote thing, you're like, alpha. Uh -huh. I I do the same thing because yeah. how, how do you know an alpha? I always, I always said this, let's say there's a big group of people in a ballroom in a hotel or something like that. And all of a sudden you hear pop, 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 like could be firecrackers or could be gunshots or shit goes down somewhere the real alpha is going to grab his family uh -huh. put them down he's going to pop his head up see where the noise is coming from and try to neutralize the threat mm -hmm. rather than taking cover yes and being afraid yeah and, and if there's a way out i remember there, there used to be you don't see a lot of these movies anymore it started with uh the poseidon adventure where a cruise ship capsized in the ocean and there were leaders and then there were villains and then there were whiners uh, and, you know and then there were there was even a movie i think called like skyscraper or something like that where you know i don't know what they call it, disaster movies disaster uh, movies and it's always the alphas that are gathering the people and piling as many people as they can in their jeep and they're escaping the earthquake as the earth is opening up and there's always so, been basi so, so basically all the five foot two petite women are going out and, and I'm <laughs> kidding. It's like all the modern movies. The alpha is this yeah, tall it, woman. Okay. You, okay. But going back to what you said, like the, the truth of the movies years ago was men doing that. Well, what, that was before women started calling themselves strong, independent women. And my, my inside joke with my community is they're all strong independent women until a bridge needs to be built a war needs to be fought or a spider needs to be killed <laughs> i know i know i i said in one video i can't remember and i say this to women when they say they just want to be treated equal to a man i say which man you know because no no one wants to be treated equal to some because we all know there's meek small shy men that that could be totally dominated by practically anyone do you want to be do you want to be compared to him is that how you want to be treated you know so it's like they just find like the one out of a thousand men yeah. and then they want to be compared to that guy and they're not good at it and they don't actually want it and they're not good at it that's it great observation there Many, many years ago, probably 30 years ago, I'm sitting on a couch, the fire is crackling, we got the wine going, and I'm dating this girl, we hear noise, we're at her house, we hear noise outside the front window. Uh -huh. She's startled. And I ran over to the fireplace, grabbed the fireplace poker and ran outside. Yeah. And it was a raccoon in the bushes. Uh -huh. I come back in, she's looking at me like, I said, what's the matter? She goes, I can't believe you did it did that what what if there was somebody out there i'm like yeah like and uh -huh. <laughs> i would have neutralized them simple yeah. as that yeah and she says my ex-husband would have been crouching behind the couch uh -huh. calling 911. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've talked about that in one of my videos, how women proclaim, or maybe even in the video you're talking about, the role of women. The woman, uh, she has all these this list of things that she wants from a man. And then when she gets it, she realizes that she, that's not at all what she wants because she wants someone that, what well, you end up with is a guy behind the couch who calls the police. You know, I mean, if you want equality, no, what you mean is you want a little bit of superiority. You want, if there's compromise, no, you have to get your way. If there's a job offer, you're both offered jobs, you get your way. You end up with a guy who's behind the couch. No, no one respects that. <laughs> right. You know. Guy, that's your next book, The Guy Behind the Couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Um, I like that to think about, but not to actually be in a room with. So, yeah. so good. So good job for neutralizing the, the threat. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's your natural instinct is find weapon, go destroy, protect. And women are like, I'll wait right here. And again, that's not all, but generally we have these natural inclinations. And when we fight them, we end up here in 2020 how does a woman vet a man talk to my talk to my female audience oh oh okay you can't cut a deal with someone who isn't interested in the offer so you have to really know what you want and what you can offer before you start vetting i want to be happy okay uh, me too but what do you what do you mean by that what can you offer maybe that's a good starting point because I've asked women that before. And they're like, I just want la, 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 la. And I say, well, why would someone choose you? And they they stop and they have to think. Like, oh, shit. So maybe to know what you can offer and who who would match that. Who could you get? And if you're not happy with that, learn more, do more, become better. And then, and then you can get that. Um, but as far as... <sighs> I think there's so many good men out in the world where, you know, there's this women say, where are all the good men? They're everywhere. I'm looking out my window. There's one right there. I'm sure of it. You know, there's so many good men, but you're, you're missing. It seems like women are missing out on what they, what they can offer and what they really want. Answer the question or answer the statement. Where are all the good men? I, I see that a lot in the media. I see that in videos. I see that on TV. I see that on all the short form social media. It's it's almost a meme right now. Mm -hmm. Where are all the good men? Well, I'll, I'll speak to you as if you're a female friend. They're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere, but you're blind. You have on so many glasses of bullshit that you can't see. So what are you calling a good man? I think what you're calling a good man is someone that you walk into a room with and all the women go, ah, and they don't focus on you, they focus on him. And then they glance at you and go, how did she get him? So then it's your your status that you're thinking about, not anything about him. You could go home and fight with him and he could be mean to you and he could treat you like shit or you could treat him like shit. As long as when you walk into rooms, people are like, wow, that's a really great couple. I, what did she do? A great guy, that's not that at all. A great guy will, you will, first of all, you'll get a, a, along with. You know, for me, and this is just this is just who I am, I need someone who's quick banter, quick, 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 and mean in their humor. You know, I, I but that, but that's just me. So what kind, is humor important to you, woman? Then, then there's that. There's plenty of men who are funny, funnier than women, because that's evolutionary. They have to be, to try to get your attention. Someone, who, what's important to you? Is it a provider? Okay, then you can't be shy about that. You can't be the woman that's gonna go out to dinner with a guy and say how strong you and your friends are and then wonder why he wants to go Dutch with you. You, you know, you have to know who you are and proclaim it and go for the traits that actually will make you happy for the rest of your life. Someone who has the same values as you do. What are your values? Write them out. Three, three values. Okay, and then that, that's kind of your guide. That's your big that's your big ship guide. You know you're going here. And then you can add, like for, like I said, the wit and the humor and whatever and the, and the looks if you want to, but that's not going to make you happy. So the good guys are absolutely everywhere. Mostly. There's poopy ones, there's, you know, but I'd say as a general, they're flipping everywhere. What a joy. 
f- fanboy moment for a second. Uh, your humor is. Uh, you like it? So, it so hits me when you said when <laughs> you said there's good men everywhere, and then there was this silence, and you looked up and said, "Mostly." Now, that's hilarious. <laughs> Do you know that you're funny or does it just come out like that? Um, I know I, when I'm just speaking, I think it just comes out. When I'm in groups, I know that I'm yeah. comedic. Yeah, but yeah. I think, you know what I think I am? I think I'm fun. My mom my mom taught me to, um, she called it flirting. That was just her terminology for it. But it was basically like play with everyone. She's, she's like I said, she called it flirting. She said flirt with Men flirt with women, flirt with children. Take away the word flirt. She was saying, have fun with everyone that you meet. Everyone that you meet. And Brilliant. you're going to have a way better life. Brilliant. And that was that was good advice. And I watched her do that. I mean, she couldn't leave the house without la- laughing at the grocery store with a million people. And that that's a good life, too, I think. So that's it. I recently did a speech where I told I was... I was told to focus more on pickup and game and all that kind of stuff to a okay. male audience. And they thought I was going to do classic pickup artist kind of stuff. And, you know, this is how you should stand. Uh-huh. It, it, reminded, it reminded me of that uh, Ben Stiller movie, remember, uh, where he was the model. Do you remember that movie? Oh. Zoolander. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where he would have, like, a certain look uh-huh. and, like, but they all looked the same. All the looks were the same. He had one all the French man. Oh, sorry. All they're all French manicures of some yeah. sort. Yeah. yeah, blue steel, Magnum. All these like you know, <laughs> yeah. first picture. And like, give us the blue steel. He'd be like, <laughs> you know, and they were all the same look. It was funny. But what I, when I was speaking to this group of men, they expected me to give all these very specific techniques. Oh if you yeah. See it this way, if you look at her. <laughs> and do half of a smile. It means this. If yeah. she if she goes like that to her hair, that means she uh, likes you. Yeah. But if she touches this side of her face, uh-huh. you are you know, and, and there are men who do seminars on this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, my seminar, to the dismay of many of the men, was about I said this, if you want to be good with women, be good with people. Ah, clever. Absolutely. Flirt with everybody using your yes. term. Flirt. Yeah. Be the fun person in the room. Yes. Oh, it's so everyone's attracted to someone that's so competent in their skin that they don't have to worry. You know, they don't have to peacock. They don't have to for women they don't have to act like uh they're so much better than that woman. No, it doesn't matter. They're just alive. They're so alive with other people. Right. How can you not be drawn to that? Yeah. How, how, I'm so curious in the comment section if someone will say, like, how, have you ever met someone who was just charismatic naturally? And that was like not, you wanted to be by the kind of serious, dour person. I mean, those yeah. are too extreme, so it's not quite fair, but yeah, man, you're going to die. Just have a little bit of fun doing it yeah. at no one's, at no one, you know, not harming anyone. Sure. But yeah, that's great. So, so did, so you said much to the dismay of many of the men in the crowd. Uh, they wanted ooh. techniques. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, there's, I talk about this in service all the time for a restaurant industry. There's technical, technical service, and then there's charming service. I'll tell a quick story. I was new at a restaurant, and there was this uh, waiter. Oh, he was so mean. He was so mean to me. But he was a very technical server. Like, everything was on point by degrees. And then it was me who was new and just kind of, I didn't know enough of the technicality, so I had to lean heavily on charm. Okay. So we, we had two, uh, he had a two top and I had a two top and I was fun with my table. And I asked them if they had been here before and we have 700 wines and told joke, joke, fun, fun, happy, fun, good. They, his table got technical service. At the end, I find out they complained to the manager that they would like a, a server more like me because their server was an uptight dick. You know, so that was the technical. So if she if he, she looks if she does this, that's technical. Okay, that's great. Okay, if she does this on Thursdays, it's okay. But Wednesdays, every other day, blah, 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 it's just it's it's vapid yeah. instead of like you said, be good with 
people. We're not that different. We, we smell confidence the same pretty much on everyone. So if you can reek of that, then that's a good thing. And I also think that technical people for dating, they have what a dear friend of mine calls, they wear a lot of desperate cologne you know, <laughs> before, before they go out and they just smell like it, even though they know all, all this shit, it's not, it's not, you gotta put on, you gotta take, you gotta take a shower and put on a couple squirts of, I'm going to be myself and try that out tonight. And maybe I'll bomb, but the next time it'll be better and better and better. And then, and then you smell good and then things turn up, uh, look up in life. Desperate cologne. <laughs> Isn't that that, you is know, yeah. there's men yeah. and women that wear that. Men have that too. Yeah. People wear it <laughs> a lot. What is, give me your definition of somebody who's trying too hard. I think you can see that someone's trying too hard if they're accommodating too much. If everyone agrees with you, oh wait, there's a, oh, there's a, there's a scene in the office where Michael is telling Dwight that Andy's a suck up because, or Jim, he's telling Jim, Andy's a suck up because he agrees. I'm sorry, Jim was telling Michael Scott that Andy was a suck up because he agrees with everything that Michael says because he just wants to be liked. And he said, no, you're wrong because when I tell him I don't like a movie, he doesn't like it either. Okay, so he, he it's someone that tries to impress without, there's no disagreement. A try hard is someone who doesn't have their own uh opinions about anything like what do you think of that movie they'll, e they'll either be quiet about it or they'll just really strongly agree with you and that's that's no good people like a little bit i mean people are looking for like birds of a feather people are looking for common ground but if that's all you find something is amiss something's amiss so that's a that's what i would call a try hard a couple years ago i did a video on decisiveness and i told men to be decisive Okay. And the woman says, I don't feel like cooking tonight. Mm. Maybe we should go out and grab a bite. And she says, where do you want to go? And he says, I don't know. Where do you want to go? She says, I don't know. Where do you want to go? He says, I don't know. Where do you want to go? And I say, men, make a decision. Pick up the phone, you know, get a reservation and do it. Tell her what to wear. Period. Uh -huh. Yeah. None of this. Just put your finger up in the air. See which way the wind is blowing. Uh -huh. Like you got to have your own opinion. You got to have, uh, you know, stake a claim somewhere. Yes. Wishy-washy doesn't cut it in relationships. Life is sleeping and deciding where you're going to eat. So if you can't contribute to, to that, then. Life is sleeping and deciding where you're going to eat. It seems like there's a lot of that going on. That's pretty funny. Right? That's Before you eat lunch, you're f trying to figure it out for an hour. So, yeah, I mean, if, if, if your woman can't figure it out. Yeah, and I kind of like the, I love women when they, you said, decide where you're going to eat and what she's going to wear. Oh, I love that. I love that. Because I love it when women dress for their partner. Who else do you want to please? I don't know. That's just my opinion. But I like to look nice for the person that I love. Yeah. Be damned with everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So would you call yourself an anti-feminist? Yes, <laughs> yes, there might be a better term for it, but I'm all for equality, but that means something different to me. I put I on Instagram or something like a couple of years ago. It's like it was white, black, transsexual, gay, Muslim. Equality means we can all talk shit about you and you have to handle it. You know, it doesn't mean that you, you have a special little niche like, oh, shh, don't say anything about them give them the job you know that's not it so we are all at a place now of equality this is what it feels like this is what it feels like mm -hmm. so deal with it or or don't but if you're not going to deal with it don't proclaim that you need more equality because you're not asking for that you're demanding something very different than equality true what people think is equality is not equality. Equality is being shit on like everyone else and having to take your lumps. Is that is that the term? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm not for feminism. 
I'm for being feminine. I just want everyone to be happy and kind of, but that's not true either. I think that people should struggle a little bit. Yeah, I call myself a non-feminist, anti-feminist. Do you like these five minute answers for like yes, no questions? I actually do because I, I, I anticipated this after, oh, after watching your channel. I, this is why I chose you as a guest. Because Thanks. I your Thank answer. you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I have a lot of guys who've been through some shit. Yeah. Okay. And the pendulum goes from, I hate all women. All women are like that. And then it starts to swing back. I catch them on their way back a little bit. Okay. Talk to those guys a little bit. Uh, I want you to be happy. I'm happy that you're going through something right now. I think what you're going through is otherwise known as the five stages of grief, um, anger, and then, oh, wait, what is it? It's like bargaining and anger. And you only grieve something that you want. If a, if a blade of grass dies, you don't really care, but you mourn the tree that's been in your yard for 20 years when it's, when it's chopped down. I, if you don't mind, I'd like you to find some responsibility with it, recalibrate and try again or don't. Um, I, I do have, I don't want to use the word pity. I feel bad for people dating right now. I feel bad for men in particular because, because the culture, the cult, the culture of women in general is difficult, you know, with the entitlement, but there are good women out there. Um, I would say don't let the, the bitterness define you mm. unless you want to be defined as, as that. You know the old people, you know, they're like 80 men and women and their face naturally rests like this. Mm. Do you want to have a resting face like this? Do you? If you do, then, then hate, hate and blame. But if you want to have a natural cheer because you've been through some shit and you got through it, you know, uh, with a better perspective that bolsters your, your, your face in a more cheerful disposition than, than, than aim for that. It's easy to be pissed off. I mean, have you ever been really mad at someone, but then you were done and maybe the men are gonna be like, no, but I've talked to, I've talked to men and, and they say, yes, when you're really pissed off at somebody and not for something big, but like a dumb thing and they make you laugh, but you don't really want to laugh because you're not done being mad. You know, I feel like that's a fine, that's a fine thing to have happen for like 30 seconds. You can kind of tickle somebody and be like, oh, you're sad, man. put your big blue pants on, man. put your big girl pants on. And, and you can laugh them out of the situation, yeah. but don't get stuck there for 40 years. You know, don't, don't purposefully not let people cheer you up or see things in a positive light. Yeah. You know, I think. I like that. All right. You are in the service industry. You've been mm -hmm. waiting on people. All, in the same way that we can't choose our parents, we can't choose our patrons. Yeah. So yes. you don't know what's going to walk in that door. So you have served a very wide. Thousands, thousands of people, yeah. Every personality. For people who are, uh, for my audience, who is in the service industry, how do you make it? How do you stay sane in the service industry? How do you do it? I, you know, how I, you know, I say there's great men everywhere. I, th I feel like there's great guests everywhere. The moment I'm in control, you see, I, my guests, when they sit down in my section, no longer have free will. They are controlled by me and they will end up happy by the time they leave. So I, I stay sane by finding the angle to make them laugh with me. Yeah. Before coronavirus, we, we walk our guests out and we hold the door and we say goodbye. Before coronavirus, 90% of my guests would shake my hand, touch my arm, or hug me happily um, because I did my job of hospitality. And I, I figured out who they were, and then I, I made them happy based on the criteria that they provide me. So that's how I stay sane. I just have fun at work. I can't believe that when I work a shift, 
I get to celebrate anniversaries, be there for a cancer diagnosis after they are diagnosed with cancer, they're at my table and they hold my hand and tell me, I can't believe that people celebrate 50 years of marriage or the myriad of things of life. And then they give me money happily for being able to like celebrate every monumental or, or mundane thing. Yeah. What a blessing. Wow. So that's what I, that's, I love the service industry. And this, I think that what we do is also service industry a little bit. You know, we get to spend time with someone. Too bad it's only one-sided. Um, but we can kind of see the comments and, and play around in that realm. But that's, yeah. Yay us. What a charmed life we lead. I'm digging that. You have a YouTube channel? I do. With your name, Jennifer Molesky. It's true. Nice Polish name. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you guys can come hang out and and uh, see if I am your type of person or not. But yeah, there's that's that's me. Yeah, thank you for having me on today. I I really like your channel. Did you see my comment? Are you how how do you feel? Because I had a dream a couple nights ago. I woke up. I told my husband. I said I had a dream that George Bruno died, and everyone was really sad. And what a weird thing. And everyone yeah. was really sad. And it was kind of a shock to the community. And you had died from like taking the wrong medications together or something. So I'm really happy that, and I actually went online after I woke up to YouTube to be like, did he upload something? Say, okay, good. He's okay. So be careful. Okay. Well, Freud said that dreams represent fears or wishes. So I'm assuming that was a fear, not a wish. Fear that you would die and wish that we could hang out. Yeah. And it happened. There we and go. It happened. Look at that. Jennifer Molesky, thank you for joining me today. I think my audience uh, is going to love listening to you. I encourage them to go to your channel. What does the future of Jennifer Molesky hold? Well, I guess I l would like to speak. I just, I just want me. I just want to be a solid person for more people when they need a solid person. So. And to say exposure isn't quite fair, um, but I would like to sp I'd like to help more people, I guess. I also want a homestead. Also, I have this this idea of um, I want to start picking up roadkill to make um, cool clothing. Isn't that weird? That's outside. No, that's, that's outside homesteading. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't remember how I got the idea, but someone. Oh, it was, yeah, it was something on YouTube. There was like a little documentary about this woman who just, when something is hit, it's, it's like guilt-free, you know, fashion. But I'm like, okay, it's cold in Colorado. It's going to be cold. I think we're going to move to New Hampshire. And if, if we move to somewhere cold, I want to be warm, but I don't want to, whatever. So I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. So that's what the future holds for Jennifer Molesky. Raccoon leggings, broader exposure to talk to specific people that want to talk to me that was another five minute answer for a simple question <laughs> i like that well this this is in a uh, a long line of conversations i've had with not crazy people there are okay. some people that are just so i i like to say they fell down the goofy tree and hit every branch on the way down okay. and you represent my values of sanity clarity and reason with some nice satire, with mm. making me crack a smile. I can't listen to you without taking a little laugh break. And so I just wanna say thank you for the gift that you've given me and to the world. And I hope other people get a chance to uh, get that gift as well. 